Hey everyone, it's John at Evolve. Today we're going to take a look at some of the inner structure and components on Cybertruck. Um, so here we've got a new Cybertruck and uh, we've got some dismantling done on this vehicle and uh, a couple of things we'll take a look at. First is we can take a look at here's the uh, interesting triangle shaped roof rail and what it looks like underneath. So this roof rail assembly is essentially clipped into a few fasteners and basically floats in this track very much like uh, Model S or Model X uh, drip rail does. Very simple uh, installation and you can see the inner structure here of the Cybertruck when that comes off. Uh, in this case this vehicle is going to get a wrap and so if you know Cybertruck and we look on the other side you can see how tight the uh, roof rail is to where it meets the fender as well as where it meets the quarter panel in the back here so we're going to go ahead and take this off so that we have a nice fit in here but it gives us a great opportunity to look at really how this vehicle is assembled so here we're looking at Cybertruck fender and uh, and so we're going to pop this fender off there's just a handful of bolts but for most for you that really want to know what's on the inside of a, uh, a Cybertruck in the inner structure we can take a peek. So the first thing we'll look at here is the stainless steel uh, alloy fender itself. And uh, so interesting that it's simply a piece of laser cut uh, alloy that's put into basically a metal brake and bent. So super interesting when you think about it is this is not a stamped piece of steel like on every other car around us where there's a giant press that stamps this out of a roll. It's literally bent and so super interesting when we look at the exterior panel there's no return on any of these panels it's just a piece of uh, sheet metal essentially. Now the inner structure looks more traditional and this is clearly a stamped component so this exterior panel essentially is uh, adhered to this inner structure and there's just a handful of, of bolts that, uh, that attach this piece to the vehicle. Really interesting that it's just a piece of bent stainless with no returns and a, on a stamped inner structure. So we'll put this one down, but uh, fairly simple to take apart. Um, frankly, pr probably one of the simplest Teslas to dismantle. So interesting to see that as they further their design thinking for simplicity of manufacturing, it flows nicely into uh, simplicity and ease of um, repair. So really good stuff. But let's take a look on the inside. We can see this gigantic piece of quarter glass here. We're obviously not going to take this piece of glass out, but it's, it's attached very much like any other quarter glass is with uh, a few fasteners and some um, urethane adhesive. But more interesting is when we look at this is the giga casting here to go, wow, what a massive giga casting. So one piece of die cast alloy for the whole front section, and I know you've probably heard a lot about the unboxed manufacturing process where things can be assembled in components, but boy, what a giant giga casting in here. So um, all the way across the front to the other side and out. One giant giga casting, one solid piece of uh, cast aluminum. The quality of the giga casting is the best I've ever seen. Uh, so what you can see here like any other die cast, like a Hot Wheels toy, there's a little flaking here from the, from the mold itself. But boy, they've come a long way with, with uh, castings and just the quality of that casting and the giga presses that they're now using to create these. And so we'll do another piece on the, some of the giga presses and how they function, but you know, uh, molten alloy under high pressure. So there's no voids in here, no air pockets, no frac uh, fracturing or cracks. So really impressive quality um, with this Giga casting. And in comparison, we've got a Polestar sitting right next door. And I just pulled a piece of uh, a cast aluminum on that Polestar. And boy, just look at the difference in quality from this piece, this cast piece, uh, pretty ugly, versus the quality of this. So quite amazing what's happening with, with uh, Giga Castings and the technology there. Incredibly lightweight, incredibly strong. Um, as we said in some of the earlier Giga Casting videos, uh, people think if the car's hit and 
uh, you'll need to replace the entire assembly. Not true. There's sections in here where we can also just replace the front sections of this. So um, it, what's happening right now with um, the structure of vehicles is just mind-blowing how quickly it's advancing and how Tesla specifically is able to uh, deliver this kind of quality out of a giga casting and clearly the competition has a long way to go to catch up and you can see it here in this piece of cast right now so uh, amazing giga casting in this vehicle. We'll take a quick uh, peek at the quarter panel assembly and very similar so in this case we've we've pulled off the uh, wheel opening molding super simple uh, wheel opening molding design unlike sort of Model X uh, with the complexity of that really well thought through and comes off very easily. Uh, this we're going to do a wrap on as I said and we'll show a little bit about wrapping this vehicle but um, there's a camera in that front wheel opening molding and so there's going to be some calibrations to do on that uh, when we put this one back together. We also have to go through and get this uh, stainless cleaned up before we put uh, a wrap on there and we'll talk a little bit about that as well but if we look at this quarter panel essentially a bolt-on panel there's our charge port assembly here uh, but we're not going to take this one off in a when we get another one in here we got another one coming in in a day or two that's a collision repair in the back and we'll wind up taking that apart and we'll show you more about what the back end but what we do know is this is one massive giga casting in the back that goes all the way up through this sail panel um, and everything else sort of just bolts onto it, but uh, amazing design. It's, I don't think people really realize how advanced this vehicle is. A lot of criticism about its look, um, but I think uh, part of the design of the Cybertruck was to look like the future, and certainly it looks like the future, but just think about this. There's no paint on this vehicle, so what's the cost of manufacturing? What did they reduce the manufacturing cost by when they took the entire paint process out? Um, what did they reduce the cost of manufacturing by that they took stamping and welding of panels out? It's, it's an astounding number. And so I think that's one of the reasons why we see this incredibly angular look on a Cybertruck is that we're going to get away from stamping and we're going to go to, uh, to sort of bent uh, and laser cut uh, alloys. So we know that a lot of people are going to wrap these things and create different colors, but think about this, um, you could probably start to change the shape of these things as we go forward and I know there's always been a lot of talk about the skateboard or the platform where you can simply change bodies and change components. I think what we're looking at here is the beginning of that and so you know if you're a paint manufacturer you should probably have your eyes wide open right now to go hmm yeah where will we be in 10 years just think about the uh, boy the environmental impact uh, of all of the hazardous waste and materials and safe, safety and health issues for those that have to apply paint. We apply paint right over here every single day and it's cumbersome, but boy, I think in short term we're going to be just applying some film to these things and sending them down the road, if not changing what the vehicle looks like by simply unbolting some things and bolting some things back together. So, uh, we thought we'd give you a look at the inside of a Cybertruck um, and uh, uh, we don't see a lot of this. Uh, these are obviously new to the market and um, we'll continue to uh, bring you some posts about cyber, cyber truck and collision repair as they, uh, as they continue on in here. So we're going to go ahead and wrap this vehicle here in a little bit and we'll, uh, we'll show you what that looks like. If you have any questions on Cybertruck, um, if uh, any concerns, issues that you need help with solving, please, as always, ask. Uh, in the comments below and we'll get right back to you either personally or we'll post something around it. So a quick look at the inside of a cyber truck here at Evolve. Thanks again for watching our YouTube channel and uh, we'll talk to you soon.